Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and today we're going to get started with your new Enterprise Series wireless sensor. Now these instructions will apply to any of the sensors in our Enterprise wireless line of products. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a USB modem, which we highly recommend you have at least one of, even if you're going to use one of our gateway products or perhaps the IoT Edge computer, it's not a bad idea to have one of these USB modems around. It makes configuring settings in the sensors extremely easy. So that's the first thing we're going to look at is the modem. So this is the USB modem for our enterprise wireless sensors. If we open it up, we can see inside that there's three LEDs. We have a USB, a TX, and an RX LED. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and plug our modem in to the USB port of a Windows computer. This USB cable will be included with your modem. So we'll plug it in here and we'll see a couple flashes on the RX and TX LED and then the USB LED should turn on solid. If that USB LED turns on solid then it is properly mounted to your Windows computer. If it does not turn on, that you'll need to download and install the FTDI virtual COM port driver. So now that we've got that verified, we can go ahead and stick the lid back on this thing. And at this time, I like to go ahead and install the antenna for the modem. This is a 900 megahertz uh, antenna, but if you got 2.4 gigahertz modules, then you'll have a slightly smaller antenna. So go ahead and screw the antenna onto your modem, making sure that it's uh, fully seated. And then we can just go ahead and sit that off to the side here. Now next we need to have at least one enterprise wireless sensor. Today I've got an environmental uh, air quality sensor which does temperature, humidity, pressure, gas, and air quality. And this is typically what a lot of the sensors in the enterprise wireless lineup look, at, look like. But we also have some sensors that come in this black box. So just know if you have an enterprise wireless sensor that looks similar to one of these, and there's some that are actually a little oblong, um, this applies to your sensor. Now I'm not going to install the antenna onto this sensor because anytime the sensor and the modem are this close together, we can actually have too uh, high of a signal. Uh, it will actually wash out. So I have the antenna for the sensor here, but I'm not going to install it because they're so close together. I only recommend installing the antenna on both sides, the modem and the sensor, whenever they're at least 10 feet apart. So the next thing that we would need to do is to open up the sensor and turn it on. Whenever these ship by default, they're turned off. Most of these are battery powered. So if we, uh, if we open up the lid on this sensor, we can take a look inside. And we'll see that the, uh, the lid is connected with a cord, which is providing power from the batteries. This sensor actually has four batteries inside. Some will only have two. But we want to go ahead and make sure the switch inside here is switched to the on position. You'll find that switch or jumper located right here where I'm pointing. We want that switch or jumper towards this wall of the enclosure. So I switched it that direction. Okay. So now our sensor is switched on. Another couple things to look at in here. We have an R button and a C button. Uh, the R button it, it just simply resets the sensor. And this is a good way to force a transmission from the sensor. By default, these sensors only transmit every 10 minutes. So a lot of times for testing, it's easier to just come over here and hit the R button so that it forces a transmission out. We don't have to wait 10 minutes. So. Now that we've got our modem powered up, connected to our computer, and we have the sensor ready to go, let's hop onto the computer and start the Alpha Station software. Here on our computer, we're going to open the Alpha Station software. If you don't have the Alpha Station software already installed, then simply go to ncd.io and search resources for Alpha Station you'll find a start getting started guide for the Alpha Station software as well as a download link. So we're going to go ahead and open it up and this window here we can just uh, whoops 
just bring this one to the front. And we're gonna click that, the drop down box here and your modem should appear as a USB serial port device. So we'll go ahead and make sure that that's selected and then click OK. The software is going to communicate with the modem to find out what exactly it is and once it determines that it's a modem, it's going to display this screen. Now the first thing we wanna do is click on sensor view and setup. And here we'll see any sensors that check in. You'll see that another engineer in our office is working with a soil moisture sensor. We can also see these addresses printed next to the device. So if we come back over here and we take a look at our sensor, we'll actually see a label on the sensor that tells us its address. I can see that this device's address ends in 8B05. You'll see the same thing on this sensor here. It ends in 6A10. Okay. So we're looking for a transmission from this device. So I'm going to go ahead and force a transmission from this sensor by simply pressing the reset button or the R button inside the enclosure. After we've pressed that and watch on our computer, we should see a transmission come in from it, and there it is. It just appeared in our list. So we can go ahead and click on this sensor and we can uh, see that we've got some information from it here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the view button so we can see the information. It's going to tell us it's waiting for the next transmission. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and press the R button again. And here we'll see some data from the sensor populate. We can see what the temperature and humidity and pressure are. Okay. So everything here looks good. Now, like I said, by default, these, uh, these sensors uh, transmit every 10 minutes. Now, we can actually change that using the Alpha Station software. We can configure what we want that interval to be. We can also change the node ID if we uh, so choose to do so. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and close this window. And then we're going to click on the Setup button. Okay, so now it says it's waiting for the sensor to enter configuration mode. And it's giving us instructions that we first want to press, the re press and release the reset button, then hold the configuration button for six seconds. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to press and release the reset button, and then we're going to press and hold the C button for six seconds. That should do it. And now we'll see back here in this software, we actually are seeing uh, settings for the sensor. And uh, currently our delay is set to 624 seconds. So that's going to be, what, a little over 10 minutes. So we can set this down to something quite low if we want to. We can go ahead and click uh, 30 seconds. And uh, we can also set the node ID. Let's set to uh, 4, or I'm sorry, a 1. Uh, the power level, this is the wireless transmission strength of the sensor. Most generally, I don't recommend changing this. Um, the retries, you shouldn't need to change either. Pan ID is only going to be something you're going to change if you're creating a very large, very complex wireless sensor network. So most of the time, we don't need to change that either. By default, these devices are already encrypted uh, with a default encryption key. If you wish to change this, you certainly can, but to get started with, I'd recommend leaving this alone for now. So once we have our settings the way that we want them, we can just simply click Write Sensor Configuration. Okay, and now it's telling us to reset the sensor to return to run mode and close this window. So we'll come back over to the sensor, and we're simply going to press the reset button on the sensor. That's actually going to reset the sensor and it's going to go back into normal run mode operation. So back over on the computer, I'm just going to go ahead and click on view for the uh, air quality sensor here. And it tells us it's waiting for a transmission. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the reset button again. And we'll see that we did in fact get a transmission from the sensor. And there we'll see we just got a second transmission from the sensor. We can tell because the transmission cycle counter went from one to two. 
So I hope this video was useful for getting your new sensor out of the box and functioning. At this point, you're probably going to want to do some more stuff. This was just really a quick start, and it allows you to verify that your hardware is working as expected. It allows you to configure settings and the sensor is needed, and then you can actually go and start developing your application. So if you have any questions for us, be sure to reach us on community.ncd.io, and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.